Hey AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here for video four and our final video that covers topic 4.7 and our final video that covers the entirety of unit four. We're wrapping up L'Hopital's rule with a really special question here. It's a question L'Hopital's rule AP style and we're not messing around. This is truly AP style because this is a question from a former AP exam. So let's take a look at what L'Hopital's rule looked like back in 2018, I believe, from problem number five. The problem started off with some information about a function f of x defined as e to the x times cosine of x. And it walked us through three parts, a, b, and c. And then it finally came to this conclusion with part d. And it was worth three points. It says, let g be a differentiable function such that g of pi over 2 is equal to 0. The graph of g prime, the derivative of g, is shown below. We're asked to find the value of the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of f of x over g of x, or state that it doesn't exist. Justify your answer. So if you've watched some of the other videos uh, leading up to this particular problem, you probably know by now that the only way that we can earn full credit on a L'Hopital's real question on the advanced placement exam is to show that the two separate limits are going to yield values that lead to an indeterminate form. So that basically means you have to show that limits are equal to zero or equal to infinity simultaneously. But you've got to do it separately. Writing something like this limit equaling 0 divided by 0 will not earn that credit. And the reason is because 0 divided by 0 is not a number. We can't set something equal to something that's not numerical. So just basically split this apart. It's a little bit extra writing, but it's definitely worth it if it means you're going to earn a point. So we have this limit separate from this limit. And then we can go ahead and evaluate each of these. Now we can evaluate the first limit by simply plugging in pi over 2 in for this function. We can plug pi over 2 in because we know that f of x is this nice, well-behaved, continuous function, right? e to the x is a nice, smooth curve that goes on forever. Cosine of x is a nice, smooth curve that goes on forever. Those two things multiplied together will make a nice, smooth curve that goes on forever. And so we don't have to state that f of x is continuous to make this happen. Now notice that cosine of pi over 2, that is indeed equal to 0. And so that's going to wipe out this entire quantity and thus give us the 0. We're on our way to being able to use L'Hopital's rule. Well, when you look at the second piece, it kind of gets interesting because you're thinking, OK, well, can I plug pi over 2 in for the x here? Well, I have no g function to look at, right? I have a g prime. But I don't have a g function to plug pi over 2 in. But if you just look a little bit up here, you'll notice that, oh my gosh, they gave us the fact that g of pi over 2 is equal to 0. However, it comes with a caveat. The only way that we are allowed to use that kind of approach to evaluating this limit is if we know that that function g is continuous. Otherwise, we're only allowed to approach our destination of pi over 2. We can never truly reach it. But lo and behold, the problem says that g is differentiable. So that's your clue to know that g is continuous. And beginning with the 2000 exam, students had to use a causal relationship. And I really would advise you moving forward to make sure that we make that happen. So in, in other words, you could say something along the lines of, because g of x is continuous, and you can certainly abbreviate, I have no problem with my students doing that. I've read many AP exams where we see that. Then we can say, therefore, g of x is differentiable. You can even use the three dot symbol for therefore if you'd like. And then I'll use d, uh, I'm sorry, g of x is continuous. Uh, let me let me do this the right way. I'm making a big production out of this, and I'm screwing it up. <laughs> we want to say, because g of x is differentiable, therefore g of x is continuous. I apologize for that. It is extremely important that you write it in that order. 
because g of x is differentiable, we know that g of x is continuous. If you want to streamline that very, very succinctly, I know that in 2000, on the alternate exam, the form that was used during the pandemic, students could say something like this. And that was accepted. But you couldn't replace the arrow with the word and. It's just that subtle little difference. So you have to establish some type of causal relationship. Now that we know that those are facts, we can go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to work from down here now. And so I'm going to take the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of the derivative of the numerator. Now that derivative is going to result in us having to use the product rule in this case. So the derivative of e to the x times cosine would be e to the x times cosine, right? I took the derivative of e to the x, kept cosine the same, and now I'll keep e to the x the same and then multiply by the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. Now it might be worth mentioning, on the 2018 AP exam, I believe an earlier part, perhaps it was part B, asked students to already take the derivative of that function. And I think students were awarded two points for doing that. So you would have already performed that particular operation, and you're just importing that here into part D. If you think about that, there's two points for that part. You're going to get three points here in just a little bit you've already kind of knocked down five of the nine points for this free response question. For the derivative of the g, we're just going to call that g prime of x, of course. And then at this point, we're going to go ahead and plug in our pi over 2. Um, and that's going to cause us to have to probably do some simplifying. But we'll go ahead and do that. Now, you don't necessarily have to write this step out if you prefer not to. A lot of students may have done this work in their heads. But we got something that looks like this in the numerator. And of course, our denominator is going to be g prime of pi over 2. And now we start simplifying. Uh, you really don't have to simplify the numerator. Uh, the denominator does need to be evaluated, though. But what we're going to find out, I believe, is that the cosine of pi over 2, as before, was 0. And our negative sine of pi over 2 is negative 1. Now what that means is that we're going to get a negative of e raised to the pi over 2 power as our numerator. Now if we get this denominator locked down, we've got this thing wrapped up, and it asks us to find the derivative of g at pi over 2. Notice here's our graph of g prime, the derivative of g. What more could we ask for, right? Here's our pi over 2 that we're going to evaluate, and lo and behold, that answer would be a positive 2. That's the value on the curve of g prime. And this is our answer. I might want to make a note of what some of the common errors were on this question besides obviously students forgetting to write this was huge that particular year. It was very rare uh, in, in many cases to see students who wrote that. Um, students were doing a pretty good job of separating the two limits because that had been announced, um, you know, in the in the in the year or 18 months or so leading up to this particular test. But one thing that I noticed as I was scoring this problem is that a lot of students thought that g prime of pi over two was undefined, and I can certainly see why they think that, because they're looking at this sharp turn here and they're thinking, oh, anytime you have a sharp turn in calculus, that means you we're undefined. Well, that's only if you're taking the derivative at that sharp turn. This already was a graph of the derivative. Had this been a graph of g, we might have had a different situation on our hands there. So there is your solution to the 2018 AP question AB5, uh, part D, that was worth a full three points. And I believe I've got the scoring rubric here. I know it's kind of covered up a little bit, unfortunately. Um, maybe I can any luck move it out of the way i don't know if it's going to want me to move it out of the way <laughs> but anyhow you can kind of see the three points that were being awarded for those particular pieces stating that g was continuous and doing the two separate limits so that's all of this stuff worth a point applying l'hopital's rule which is basically knowing to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and then of course your answer was worth the third point 
I certainly hope this has been helpful and I've enjoyed all of Unit 4 and I'm looking forward to the next series of videos that cover Unit 5. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.